Hey guys, what's going on? And welcome to another video. And before we get started, I just have to say guys, we just hit a huge milestone here on the channel. I just got my 100th subscriber and I can't believe it. I never thought when I started working on these videos two months ago that in this amount of time that we get to 100 subscribers. So anyway, guys, I just wanted to say thank you so much to everyone who's been watching my videos and leaving comments and stuff like that. I could not do it without all of you. Anyway, guys, as I said before, thank you very much. And all right. And please, to all my new watchers, subscribe and leave a like. And now let's get into the topic of today's video. As we all know, on the night of April the 14th, 1912, Titanic struck an iceberg on the starboard side below the waterline and began to sink. But for today's video, we are going to be looking at not the sinking or the story of the officers or anything going on above decks. We are going to be looking below deck and be talking about what was going on in the boiler rooms and where the real final battle to save the Titanic took place and everything that happened in order to keep the ship from sinking for as long as possible. One of the key witnesses that allows us to really understand what was going on in the boiler rooms during the sinking was this man. His name is Frederick Barrett, and he was the lead fireman in boiler room number six, and he survived the disaster. His testimony comes in as a great first-hand account to the fight that the engineers were doing down in the boiler rooms trying to keep the Titanic afloat as long as possible. As you can see from this blueprint of the Titanic, the red lines you see along the Titanic's hull are the watertight compartments, and the green lines you see are the points in the hull where the iceberg damaged the ship. Now, as you can see, boiler room number six was very heavily damaged by the iceberg impact, but boiler room five had a very, very small tear in it. Frederick Barrett was hard at work in boiler room number six when the Titanic struck the iceberg, and this is where his story began. At 11.40 p.m., right before Titanic struck the iceberg, Frederick Barrett noticed a red warning light come on and an emergency bell rang, letting him know that he needed to shut all the dampers on the boilers in the boiler room. The dampers are the, basically these big doors that allow the firemen and engineers access to the fire. This was what he did right before Titanic struck the iceberg at 11.40 p.m. But while the men were still at work getting the boiler room secure, Titanic struck the iceberg, and due to how much damage boiler room 6 got in the impact, the entire wall exploded open, and water rushed into the boiler room, forcing the men inside to retreat further back into boiler room number 5. Before we go any further, we need to talk about the Titanic's pumps. Now, the Titanic over the years, and at the time as well, has gotten this reputation for, you know, where she was a huge ship, that everything about her was huge. You know, she had these massive pumps that could deal with any kind of damage. Well, that wasn't really the case. The Titanic's pumps were never designed or never like really intended to, to handle a massive catastrophic flooding scenario like uh, the Titanic found itself in. The pumps weren't exactly in the right places, and I'll show you what I mean in a second. The Titanic had two pumps, a bilge pump and a ballast pump. The ballast pumps were used to keep the ship at an even keel. If the ship was leaning in one direction, you flood some tanks with the ballast tanks and the ship would level itself. The bilge pumps were the primary ones used to, you know, eject water from the ship. Like if you have some flooding and stuff like that here and there, that's what the bilge pumps were for. But the problem was the pumps weren't in the best areas to help the engineers deal with the flooding situation that they found themselves in the night the Titanic was sinking. As you can see from this chart, this chart shows the two types of pumps that I mentioned earlier and how many of each pump they were and their locations throughout the ship. So as you can see, the Titanic had five ballast pumps, but only one located towards the front of the ship. One of the ballast pumps was located in boiler room five, but boiler room six didn't have any pumps. Now all the bilge pumps, the primary ones used to eject water from the ship, were all located towards the back of the ship. So what the engineers would have to do is run hoses from the back of the ship where those pumps were located to the front of the ship in order to help the people there deal with the flooding. So what that ended up meaning as well, when Titanic struck the iceberg, they gave orders on the bridge to shut all the watertight doors, and each watertight door blocked off like each compartment of the ship. So towards the aft end of the ship, where all those pumps were, the engineers in there, in order to help the flooding, they would actually have to go through and manually open up each watertight door. The bridge couldn't flick a switch and open up all the doors themselves. Each door had to be opened up manually by a man using a lever and cranking the doors open bit by bit. So it took a fair amount of time 
for the engineers towards the back of the ship to get hoses up to the front of the ship where the flooding was taking place. The following clip is from a Titanic film called Saving the Titanic, and it showcases what I was just talking about. It shows some engineers in the back of the Titanic in the engine room opening the watertight doors in order to manually run hoses from the bilge pumps to the front of the ship where the ship is flooding. So each watertight door that was in between them and, in, and the water, they'd have to open up manually just to run hoses to that room to try to drain the water that was rapidly flooding the ship. Taking another look at the Titanic's blueprints, the Titanic could stay afloat with the first four compartments breached, but under the iceberg's impact, six sprung open. Now the Titanic possibly could have survived five compartments breached if Boiler Room 5 had not been compromised. If Boiler Room 6 had been the only one compromised and the engineers could have focused all their efforts on keeping it from flooding, they might have been able to save the Titanic or at least greatly delay the sinking. But due to the fact that Boiler Room 5 had also been compromised, they spent all their time in there fighting the water. So because of this, there was no way to save the Titanic. The next person we need to talk about is this man. His name was Joseph Bell, and he was the chief engineer on board the RMS Titanic. And the next man we need to talk about is this man. His name was Joseph Shepard, and he was a assistant engineer on board the RMS Titanic. Both of these men were heavily involved in dealing with the disaster and trying to keep the Titanic afloat as long as possible. They were both more towards the aft end of the ship when the collision occurred, and when they were moving forward, when they got to Boiler Room 5, they ran into Frederick Barrett, who told them what was going on, and they noticed the small amount of flooding that was going on in Boiler Room Number 5. Boiler Room 5 only had a small tear inside of a coal bunker, so at the beginning of the disaster, the flooding was manageable. Uh, Joseph sent uh, Frederick Barrett and Shepard up and over the watertight door. You could actually go up and you could go down from the ship. You could climb a ladder and go up and over a watertight door. And he sent them up above to go and check on Boiler Room 6 and see if there was any hope for it while they tried to get the pumps and get everything else going in Boiler Room Number 5. However, when Shepard and Barrett re-entered Boiler Room 6, they found it to be beyond hope. They could not do anything at this point to try to save Boiler Room 6 where it was so badly flooding. So at this point, they headed back up the ladder and sealed it off and began to put in more work in order to try to delay the flooding of Boiler Room Number 5. Once Barrett and Shepard had gotten back into Boiler Room 5 and told Bell what had happened in Boiler Room 6, he would have known that the ship was doomed. So his attention at that point would have been, instead of saving Titanic, let's just try to delay her sinking and keep her afloat as long as possible. So at that point, they would have really began to operate the ballast pump, the pump that they had immediate access to in Boiler Room 5, which was built into the floor of the Titanic. So it was a plate in the floor of the Boiler Room. That's where the ballast pump was and they would just have been doing everything they could to delay the flooding of Boiler Room 5 for as long as possible. And another thing they needed, they needed steam. They needed steam to keep the pumps running, to keep the power going, and to do everything they could to make sure as many people evacuate as long as possible. Now, Bell didn't order the men to stay down there. A lot of them were released. Um, he offered them a choice. You know, you could go up top and try to save yourselves or stay down there with him to try to keep the ship afloat as long as possible. And Frederick Barrett ended up staying for a while. Uh, him and Shepard began to work on getting the ballast pumps online. Now the ballast pump was built into the floor, as I said, and it was like a plate that was on the ground and they'd have to lift up a big metal door and run the hoses in there to turn that on. However, when they did that, an accident occurred. At this point in the sinking, the water was about ankle deep in boiler room number five, and Barrett and the men in there opened up a covering on the pump in order for them to run the hoses and to try to drain the water inside of the boiler room. However, Shepard didn't notice the opening where the pump was, and his foot went right into it, and he ended up breaking his leg. They did what they could to save him, and they did manage to pull him out and try to set his leg, but this injury would later prove fatal when the boiler room ended up flooding. With all the pumps and everything running inside of the boiler room, it actually looked like they were succeeding in keeping the water at bay and they might even be able to delay the sinking. However, the illusion of them winning in the boiler room was fading. You see, in boiler room five, the iceberg had opened up a hole inside of the coal bunker. It was a very, very thin sheet of metal that went up the entire wall of the ship. It was just made for holding back coal. The iceberg had breached the watertight compartment. This coal bunker wasn't designed to hold back water. It was just designed to hold back coal and the water was escaping through the coal bunker door slowly slowly enough that with the pumps and everything going on, they were actually able to keep the flooding at bay. So once they got all the pumps and everything going, they actually succeeded in completely drying out the room. 
But as I said, it was an illusion. Inside of that coal bunker, the water was building up more and more and more. And it was only a matter of time before the thin metal of that coal bunker gave way and the entire room flooded. The following clip is from a Titanic film called What Sank the Titanic and it showcases the final moments of Boiler Room 5. You notice that the boiler room is more or less dry and the men are listening to the wall because they're hearing some strange sounds coming from it. And it is the water pressure inside of the coal bunker building up and causing the wall to bulge due to the, all the pressure of the water on the other side. At this point the boiler room is doomed and the wall is about to give way and as soon as it does all the water comes rushing in and Boiler Room 5 is lost. When the wall of the coal bunker caved in in Boiler Room 5 and the men tried to evacuate, that was it for that room. They tried to go back and recover Shepard, who had broken his leg, but they couldn't get to him at that point. Frederick Barrett was on his way up the escape ladder in Boiler Room 5 and saw some men get washed away, including Shepard. And so at that point, he left the Boiler Room and headed up onto the boat deck in which he escaped in a lifeboat. When Boiler Room 5 flooded, that was the end of the big efforts in order to try to hold back the water. Now, I'm not saying they abandoned all efforts to keep the Titanic afloat at that point. They didn't. You know, the pumps were still running in the back boiler rooms and everything. They did everything they could to hold back the water for as long as possible. The Boiler Room 5 was the front line. It was the main point in which if they could hold back the water at that point, they could delay the sinking for a huge amount of time, which is what they were trying to do. No one knows the fate of Joseph Bell. He was, as I said, the chief engineer of the Titanic, so the theory is he stayed down below until the very end and never tried to escape. Since some of the electricians and stuff were still in the engine room up to the very end, I think he was probably in there. You know, because people say that the Titanic's lights stayed on until moments before the end, even after Titanic broke in too, the emergency generator kicked in and lights here and there were still on even after the breakup. So I think that Joseph Bell was probably in the engine room, doing his duty to the very end, just doing everything he could to try to keep the power and keep the ship alive for just a little bit longer. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it and I hope you found it interesting and learned something. And once again, I would just like to thank you all for everything you've done to help out my channel. I love reading the comments and thank you to all of my subscribers. I still can't believe I hit 100. It's mind blowing. Anyway, I want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and I hope you all have a great holiday. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.